The maple meditation in the Phyllis Crystal Method is one of the three central symbols that's used in, these, in this particular work. The maple meditation is actually very, very powerful. It's one of the most powerful meditations that we know of. And actually it's sufficient for almost or practically every problem. The two other symbols that are central to this work are the figure eight and the cosmic tree. In today's session of the maple, we're actually going to go much deeper. I remember once how after having practiced the Phyllis Crystal method for four years and having gone through the basic uh, and advanced workshops with Phyllis, she laughed and told us once as if we were small children that you are just scratching the surface of what this method can do. So today we're going to go a little bit deeper, but what we will show you today is actually very, very powerful. The high C, the higher consciousness, God, is capable of giving us whatever we need if we're willing to receive it. In this session, we're going to ask for different flows of energy. In today's session, we're going to start with the sthita flow. Sthita is a word that means, it's a Sanskrit word that means silence, equanimity, balance. It incorporates all of these different meanings. Sthita is something that the yogis aspire for because when you have true sthita, you become connected to God, you become one with God. It becomes easy to have that final union with God. So we're going to ask the high C to send us the sthita flow and we're going to allow that sthita flow to come through us and do whatever that energy needs to do. Remember that these are divine energies that come directly from God. They're not different from God. And as such, these divine energies know exactly what needs to be done. Your focus should be on just allowing the energy to flow through you without trying to control or guide the flow of divine energy. Remember, these energies know exactly what you need. We don't know, we could never know, but the divine energy knows because God knows. So we're going to focus on this sthita flow. Let's begin. Go to your inner circle. See that the ribbon from the maple is in your hand. Take a few breaths in. Deep breathing. Exhale out any tension that you may be receiving. Ask to receive relaxing energy. For these flows to really come through without interruption, it's helpful if you're completely relaxed. So breathe in deeply and ask for that relaxing energy. Again, even though it's coming from a small ribbon, feel as if it's coming from a huge fire hose that's completely wide open, just engulfing you in this divine, relaxing energy. Let go of any tension or strain. Let go of even the concern that you might be interrupted or bothered while you're doing this particular meditation. Now let's ask for healing energy and ask to be healed of any doubts or beliefs that you have that you're not able to receive this type of sthita flow. Be healed of the belief that you're somehow not good enough to receive these advanced or divine energies. These are your birthright. Just as unconditional love is your birthright, so are these other types of energies, which are all just different aspects of God. We're exploring those now. Now ask for the sthita flow. Ask the high C to send this divine energy to you. Think, feel, visualize, or imagine this energy is flowing to you. And then it flows through you. And as it flows through you, it goes to wherever it is needed. You don't have to watch it or follow it after it goes through you. That is not your concern. Breathe in deeply and allow this sthita flow to flow in a huge gush of energy. Allow it to bring silence, equanimity and balance to you.
Now let's pause for a minute just to go over a few things. When you first start with this chitta flow, what happens is the mind will become quiet and then typically it will become active again. What we have learned is that we're most useful as God's instrument when our mind is completely silent because then it's easier for him to guide us whether we are aware of it or not. Some people will say, but if I'm completely silent, then how will I think? Because I need to think in order to carry out my work, to do all my tasks, whether it's taking care of my family, my job, my studies, and so forth. But actually, if you think about it, most of the thinking that we do, at least 99%, is useless thinking. It's just the mind chattering and rolling around in many different twists and turns oftentimes ruminating on things that have happened in the past, chewing them over and over again, or worrying about the future. Very rarely are we present in this now moment. In this Titta flow, we allow all those things to go away. Thoughts and concerns about the past or the future should dissolve away by the energy of the flow. You actually don't have to do anything except to focus on the flow of energy. Typically though, what will happen is, once your mind becomes silent, even for a little bit, there'll be a period of discomfort, unease, because you're not used to being silent. If you think about it, many people when they're alone, they'll put on music, they'll turn on the TV, they'll look at their phone, they'll look at the internet, whatever it is, simply to escape this unease or disquiet that might happen. If they were actually to be silent, for a little bit. So when the stitta flow begins, you might feel some period or some degree of discomfort or unease. Allow this to go away on its own. It will. The stitta flow will take care of it. And go deeper into silence. And just feel the peace that comes from this. From this silence comes ananda or bliss. From this silence comes consciousness. From this silence comes sat or the truth. From this silence comes samadhi. From this silence comes absolute awareness. Sitting in your golden circle, the ribbon is in your hand. It's a huge flow of energy. Ask the high sea to send you the stitta flow again. Just focus completely on the flow of energy and allow the divine energy to do whatever it needs to do. Keep your awareness on the flow of energy. It's a continuous, uninterrupted flow of divine energy, the stitta flow.
and let's come back from this meditation. You can gently turn and stretch your arms and hands, your feet and legs. Move your back, arch your back a little bit, your neck. If you're a cat or dog coming out of sleep. This Ditta flow is very powerful. And again, if you just do this one flow, it's enough to give you everything that you need. Continue to focus though, when you're doing this meditation, it should be a continuous flow of energy. That is what's important, that this is a divine energy and it'll do exactly what it needs to do. Just focus on the flow. If a thought comes, if a train of thought comes and takes you away from the meditation, just come back and ask to reconnect to that stitta flow. Just let it flow again. It'll happen automatically. And you'll go back into that silence, that balance, that equanimity. You can actually feel it now. And as you continue to do this meditation, on, hopefully on a daily basis, you will see that you'll, your mind will become more and more silent and more receptive to God's guidance. You become an instrument of the Lord without even being aware of it. That's the first exercise that we're going to do. Now, let us go on to the darshan flow. The darshan flow. Darshan is a Sanskrit word which means the sight or vision of God. To have God's darshan is to be before the Lord. If you have a particular form or name of, or aspect of God that you adore, then it would be having this particular darshan. If you adore God as a formless aspect, then it would still be as if you're before the Lord in all of the Lord divine glory. We're going to ask this darshan flow to come to us and through us. This particular flow is very, very powerful. And, ex and as an example, once I was doing this particular exercise, after our annual Phyllis Crystal Method retreat here at Bangalore, and I was just doing it quietly during one of the breaks. One of our brothers was standing about 15 feet away from me. And as I connected to the darshan flow and the darshan energy flow through me, this brother felt it immediately. It was as if a huge gush of energy had come to him and he was having God's, God's darshan through this particular flow. That's how the darshan flow can affect and uplift others around you without your even being aware of it. Remember that this is a divine energy. It's going to come to you and through you. But what happens with that flow after it comes through you is none of your concern. Just focus solely on the uninterrupted flow, continuous flow of God's darshan. So are you ready? You're still sitting in your golden circle. You're still connected to the high sea through the ribbon. Ask God to send you his darshan flow. Think, feel, visualize, or imagine this tremendous darshan flow coming to you and going through you. It's a continuous flow of divine energy. Breathe in deeply and take this darshan flow into you. Focus on the flow of God's darshan through you.
and let's come back from this meditation. You can gently stretch your arms and feet, your hands and legs. This is a very powerful meditation. I would recommend that you do this again on a daily basis. One of the exercises that I'll ask you to do after you finish this particular series of exercises is to continue with this practice even after you are finished with the maple. So for example, when you're sitting in a chair, not doing anything else, just take five minutes and allow these different flows of energy, the sthita flow and the darshan flow to go through you with your eyes open. Next, when you're comfortable with this, I'd like you to do this as a walking meditation so that as you walk, you're focusing on the sitta flow. And then later, you're focusing on the darshan flow. See what it feels like. How is it to be aware in your physical world, doing the activities that are required of you while God's energy flows through you? You'll see that your thoughts will change, your words will change, your activities and actions will change because you're guided more directly by this flow. And that brings us to the third and final flow, which I call the Sankalpa flow. The Sankalpa flow. Sankalp is a Sanskrit word which means God's will. I can describe it this way and you can actually practice this as you're listening. So I'm going to ask you, don't do anything, but I'm just going to tell you to raise your hand. Leave your hand as it is. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and when you do so, actually raise your hand. So let's do this together. Raise your hand. Okay? So that impulse, that energy, that caused you to raise your hand, that is Sankalpa. That's what Sankalpa is. It's, we call it will, but it's a bit more than that. It's that flow that will that caused you to actually or motivated you to raise your hand. When I just said raise your hand and you kept it still, nothing happened. But when I asked you to raise your hand and you actually did lift up your hand, that impulse, that will that flowed through you, that is Sankalpa. God's Sankalpa, the divine Sankalpa, is what manifests in this entire universe. And when we align ourselves with God's Sankalpa, the divine Sankalpa, in our thought, word and deed, then we become a divine instrument through which anything can be accomplished. What we've learned through the years is that it really has no significance what we want. That is, what I want is not at all important. It's irrelevant. What does matter is following God's Sankalpa. And this is a question that we would ask ourselves every day. God, what is your Sankalpa? And then we would do our best to follow it. The problem, even with this approach, although it's a good one, is that it assumes that you're asking constantly throughout the day. But when you're in the Sankalpa flow, God's Sankalpa flows automatically through you so that your thoughts, your words, and your deeds are automatically in alignment with the Lord's. And what I found doing this particular exercise, allowing the Sankalpa to flow through me, is that whatever I need, comes automatically, whether it's assistance, resources, contacts, activities, knowledge, strength, it just comes automatically because I'm always in alignment with the divine will, with the Sankalpa flow. You're sitting in your golden circle, you're still connected to the maple, the ribbon is your hand, breathe in deeply, Ask for relaxing energy. Breathe in deeply and exhale. Ask for healing energy. Heal yourself of any beliefs that you have that you're somehow not able to do this, of these wrong notions that you're not fit for this. Heal yourself of all these old beliefs. And when you're ready, ask for the Sankalpa flow. Think feel, visualize or imagine this energy flowing continuously without interruption to you and through you. Breathe in deeply.
continuous flow of sankalpa. Allow the energy to flow through you without interruption. Focus on the flow. Let's gently come back you Can stretch your hands and feet, your arms and legs. Arch your back like your dog or cat coming out of sleep, coming back to the present moment. These three flows that we've done today, the Darshan flow, the Sitha flow, and the Sankapa flow are all very, very powerful. But we've just scratched the surface of what they can do. What I would suggest is that you practice the Maypole twice a day. What we had done just now is actually an extended version of the maypole. You can do an abbreviated version for your own practice, maybe taking about five minutes each time. And then whenever you have time throughout the day, play with these different flows, the sthita flow, the darshan flow, and the sankapa flow, and see what happens. Try to really understand, try to really feel the flow as it goes through you. Really focus on the uninterrupted, continuous flow of divine energy through you. You don't have to sit quietly in meditation. You might be, say, sitting as a passenger in a car, train, or bus. Not while driving, please, but during other times. You can do it while you're waiting in line somewhere, say at the bank or at the cafeteria. You might uh, do it while you're waiting for a meeting as preparation for a meeting at work or at waiting for a class. Just takes a few moments, doesn't have to be an extended practice, but as you go deeper and deeper into these flows, see how your life is transformed. Practice this and our next session will come back and go even more deeply. Let's end now by sharing the unconditional love that we started with. We need to give that to ourselves. So let's place our hands around yourself as if you're giving yourself a hug and inside to yourself, just tell yourself, I love me. And now, if you'd like, you can say it aloud. I, I love, love me. me. And now let's say it louder. I, I love me. And now let's say it louder still. I, I love me. me. Let's come out of the meditation. Namaste and Sairam.